Hey guys, this is lesson 4.2, part 2. So we're going to be talking about the shortest distance from a point to a plane. Okay, so um, we had already talked about something very similar, actually. I think it was lesson 3.2, part 2, where we talked about the distance from a point to a line. And so in this video, what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute that line, and we're now going to talk about a plane instead. But both methods are pretty much the same um, because the shortest distance is at a right angle. That means that you're talking about some sort of a perpendicular vector and ta-da, in your head, normal vector, right? So a normal vector is a perpendicular vector to whether you're talking about a line or a plane. That means that within your formula, so we have a nice red formula right in front of us, um, you should expect that the normal vector is somehow embedded into it. Now if you go back to lesson 3.2, part 2, that formula looks almost identical to this formula. The only difference is this one is adapted for a plane instead of a line. And so there's more components in the numerator and the denominator, but pretty much the exact same. Okay, let me just go over how to use it again. So when we're talking about a point, like this guy right here, I'm then going to put that point into my x, y, and z of my formula. My plane that I'm talking about has to be in scalar Cartesian form. It just makes it easier to use the formula because the formula has your a, b, c, and d from your scalar form in the numerator. Notice that the numerator is surrounded by absolute value symbols, and that's because sometimes you get a negative number in the numerator, which would cause your entire answer to be negative. Uh, you don't want a negative distance because it doesn't really make sense. Okay, so those absolute value symbols will correct that. Now in your denominator, you'll notice that you have your a, b, and c coefficients, which are your normal vector for the plane. Okay, so obviously a normal vector is a line and therefore it has three components in it in three dimensions. So you'll have your magnitude of the normal vector as your denominator in this formula. Okay, let's just try an example. Example number one, find the exact distance, which means no decimals, okay, from a point Q to a scalar form of a plane. Hey, okay, if I have the point and I have the scalar form, that's exactly what I want. I'm just going to throw everything into that formula. Okay, so colors are beautiful. Formula, okay, D equals absolute value symbols. And we're going to put in our plane 2x minus y plus 3z minus 5. And now I'm going to sub in that coordinate into the x, so let's get rid of this, the y, and the z. Okay, so the x value for my coordinate right here is 1, and then you got your y, which is 3. Okay, you're subbing it in all brackets, all right? Z, which is 7. Okay, now the denominator is going to be the coefficients from my scalar form of my plane. And so you got your 2 for your a, your negative 1, and then your 3. You're going to square each of those. This guy has to have a bracket, right? And then you're going to square root to find the magnitude. Okay, so we have no more variables other than your distance. That means we just solve. So equals 2 absolute value symbol. Okay, so 2 minus 3 plus 21 minus 5, close bracket. And that's going to be a 4 plus 1 plus 9, all square rooted. And where do I have more room? Going over here. Equals 2. On the top, let's see, negative 1 plus 21 minus 5. I think that's a positive 15. And I don't need the absolute value symbols anymore because it was a positive 15 answer. So if it was a negative 15 answer, I'd use this um, absolute value symbols to just convert it back to um, a positive 15. So it's all over root 14. I don't want the root on the bottom. We're going to rationalize it because we know how to do that. 
and I'm going to jump to the answer, which is 15 root 14 over 14. Therefore, sentence, because this is a word problem, they asked us what the distance is. The distance is 15 root 14 over 14 units because we don't know if it's centimeters, millimeters, or whatever. Okay, so that was a pretty straightforward question. I do have one more, and then obviously it's not going to be as straightforward. Okay. Example number two. Find the exact distance from a point to a plane. Aw, oh, man. Okay, so the plane, they didn't give us scalar form. They gave us three points on the plane. And so you're like, it kind of looks like this. If you have your plane, you have maybe like A right here and then B right over here and maybe C somewhere. So what you have to do is you actually have to create the scalar equation first and then you can use the distance formula. So they've thrown in that roadblock, but that's okay. We know how to do that. What we're going to do is figure out two um, direction vectors on the plane using any of these points. And you can go in any direction. You can combine any two points you want. And so I just decided to find A, B, so that direction vector, and A, C. Okay, so all you need are two direction vectors. Using A, B, what I did was I just did position vector for B minus position vector for A. Okay. This one was position vector for C minus position vector for A. When you subtract and you start to simplify, you'll get two new um, direction vectors, which I just called A and B just because it's easier. All right. And I don't really care too much about the scalar number. I actually just care about the direction. And so this direction vector is all I need. Now, once I have those two, I'm then going to create a normal vector. Okay, so this is going to be our normal vector. And I'm going to do that by doing the cross product. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down. So doing the cross product of A and B will then give you this guy right here. And again, I don't really care about that scalar um, number in the front. I actually just care about the normal vector because it's nice and reduced. Okay, so those numbers are the simplest form, and that'll go straight into the AX plus BY plus CZ plus D formula for a plane. Okay, so this is going to be my ABC coefficients that go into that scalar form, and then in my X, Y, and Z, I'm actually going to choose any of those points from before. Let me just scroll back up so that you can see. I decided to choose this one. It really doesn't matter which one you choose because technically all of them are on the plane, right? Your A, your B, and your C are lying on the plane. So it really doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, you should get the same answer either way, or I should say an acceptable answer either way. So taking your B, I'm going to put that into my X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to calculate for D. So that D is then going to go straight back into the final form of my scalar equation with the normal in your 1, negative 3, and negative 2 coefficients. Okay, so you're just putting the D right there because we didn't know what it was before. All right. That was a lot of work just to get to wherever we should have been. So that is our scalar form. Now we can finally use the distance formula with our point Q because we had actually wanted to find that scalar form, which is this guy. Okay, so that represents the plane. We actually wanted to find the distance from Q to this guy. All right, now that we have this, we'll sub in our Q into the distance formula. And, oh, that's weird. We get the same answer as example number one for some reason. So therefore, the distance of this question is 5 root 14 over 14 units. Okay, so that's it. Very short lesson because 
we had already talked about this lesson in lesson 3.2. Um, so enjoy having a shorter lesson, okay. <laughs> a shorter video. You're welcome. Have a great day, guys.